Welcome back to St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and welcome to the wrap-up show brought to you by the UPMC Health Plan. Mike Pursuta joined by Craig Wolfley here on campus. We are wrapping up the second-to-last public practice of training camp 2023. And to kick off things today, we take it down to the playing surface at St. Vincent College in Chuck Knoll Field and welcome Braden Fajoko to the program. Braden, really appreciate you taking a few minutes uh, I wanted to start today with Team Run. Uh, that was loud. You could hear it up here. Uh, you guys were getting after it down there, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, the offense likes to uh, get a little chippy, and, you know, they talk a little smack during seven <laughs> shots. So uh, Team Run's a, a, a good time for us to narrow the game down to the run game and, and uh, get to hit them in the mouth a little bit. Braden, you are a, a run plugger. I mean, you plug any hole. Matter of fact, I've heard it said that if you run the Titanic, that ship makes it into port. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely, brother. But, you know, I watch you down there. You play with a low pad level and you got strong hands. Tell me a little bit about your game and what you love about playing that nose tackle position. Uh, you know, I just I think it's a, a position that you need to be physical. It's it's one that you can't measure with talent. You measure it with your heart. Um, and so I take a lot of pride in, you know, putting my hand in the dirt and the A gaps and, and putting my hands on people, you know, specifically centers. And um, I take a lot of pride in the run game. You know, me and, you know, Yolandon Roberts and Cole Holcomb and Quan Alexander, I talk to those guys every night, and, you know, I literally tell them every night I go to sleep, I think about how we can make the inside of that defense better. Um, I think about making sure no running backs run between the A-gaps and run between the tackles, and, you know, that's just my game. That's my niche. You know, I've become fond of it. That's what I'm good at, and, you know, hopefully I can bring a little bit to Pittsburgh this season and um, help us be the best team we can be. Does that put you to sleep? Because that would keep me up at night trying to think up ways to be better. I'd think of maybe a glass of warm milk or, I don't know, maybe something a little stronger. You, you seriously mm -hmm. go to bed thinking, how can I be better tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the whole point of being an athlete, being a competitor. Um, you know, at this point in my career, I figured out, you know, the tools I need to be to um, take my game to the next level. And it's working with the linebackers, working with the older guys like Cam and Larry every day, um, helping my game, helping my craft, Coach Dunbar, everybody that's poured into me, um, giving me this array of tools I can use in my toolbox and uh, ultimately help the team when we come out here for practice every day. Braden, you seem to have a decent amount of, you know, being able to pass rush, you get that forklift going, you get the uppercut. What's your specialty, man? Uh, don't tell me the ghost move because I know there's no way you can pull off a ghost move from a three-tech. You know, so every day we, before we start pass rushing drills, uh, we go with one of our EQ assistants, and uh, he has the dummies um, on his hands, and so we use it to do hand moves. And so um, we're going through pass rush moves, double hand swipes, chop, dip, and rips, and then we get to the ghost move. And uh, Coach Tomlin, <laughs> Coach Tomlin comes up to me today. He's like, "Yeah, B, uh, just stick to the bull rush." <laughs> so, um, power rushing, power rips, bull rushing is 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 what I'm good at, and you know I'm just gonna stick with my fastball pitch for now. <laughs> uh, Brain, one more about Team Run, if you will, because I don't know if you've picked up on this yet, but that's what we do here in Pittsburgh. We break down drills and training camp to the nth degree, because. It's that important to us. Looked like you had a couple of plays, I think, consecutively. A big hit on somebody I couldn't see the pile kind of obscured my view. And then you had a tackle for a loss. And was that you kind of stomping around and letting everybody know, hey, I had that? You know, it, it's – to me um – you know, and I've talked to Coach Tomlin about it, and he says, you know, every time we take the field, he's like, B, this is your drill. Um, you know, you have to be dominant. You have to let people know that the inside of the defense here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is nowhere to run. And so, you know, just coming out there and just bringing energy so my teammates can feed off of it. You know, it helps when, you know, you got guys like Cam and, and Mon and TJ and Alex and those guys, you know, the first group just running and killing it and, you know, having all the energy. And so you just feed off of that and you keep the energy rolling, and it just helps you throughout practice, you know, and all the younger guys feed off of that. Braden, as you look at this defensive unit, kind of give me your thumbnail sketch of what you see from the front end. Because I know you're too busy to pay attention to what's happening on the back end. But up on the front end here. A lot of competition. Um, it's brought out the best in guys. Um, it's awesome for the room uh, because it puts guys in a, um, a place of achieving more. Um, you know, I'm out there on third downs now, you know, just because we're in a point of competition and seeing what everybody can do. You know, I'm having the ability to rush the passer now in nickel packages and dime packages. Um, Hopefully not in the game because, <laughs> you know, you want guys like Cam and Larry doing that with TJ and Alex. Um, but just here in camp, you know, um, getting the feel of the room, knowing what everybody's about, you know, getting to come out here every day. It's different, you know, when you're in OTAs and you're just in, you know, T-shirt and shorts. You know, now we're out here in full pads. We get to put drill work to teamwork and ultimately execute it in these preseason games. Brayden, last thing I have for you, uh, this is your 
first year with the team, first mm-hmm. trip to St. Vincent College and, and extended stay for training camp. What did you make uh, this setting and this process, and how did you enjoy it? You know, this was awesome. Going into my fourth year in the NFL, I've never experienced this type of training camp setting. Um, the fans here have been amazing. You know, when I first got here, I checked into my dorm. Uh, I was a little iffy about it. It was like an older <laughs> dormitory. And, um, it was brick walls all over, and I was like, oh, boy, this is going to be a rough one. But, man, after the first two days, you walk out here, you see the fans. You know, at night, we have our rookie talent shows. We have the home run derby. You know, we have dinner together. We meet together. Um, this is probably one of the best experiences of my life, not only just because we're here as a team, but, you know, you get to do what you love to do on an everyday basis. And to me, I don't look at it as a job. I just look at it as enjoying time with, you know, my brothers, my teammates. And um, I'm kind of sad that we have to wrap this up here in Latrobe, but, man, it's been such an awesome experience. I mean, everybody here has been just so amazing. That's a true football player right there. Let me tell you something. Hey, thank you so much, Braden. Appreciate you taking the time. That's all I got for you. Thank you, guys. Braden Fajoko, he was active in that team run, was he not? He was very active. I mean, the dude was – listen, here's the one thing about it. Like I said, he, he plays with that low pad level, the strong hands, and he's hard to move. Now, one of the things I know is that when they start with some of the inside-outside zones, that's where it can get a little difficult. But when he can plant and, and use that power and that strength of his upper body, that mass is unbelievable. I mean, he just really is able to hunker down dog and be able to take on the double team, drop a shoulder, get his hip. I mean, all those things that you that are necessary to create havoc in the inside and the, in the pits, that's what that guy's capable of doing. Well, there's a couple things uh, from practice uh, that I wanted to bounce off you, but before we go there, you're going to have to explain ghost move to me. Ghost move. That's when they go up the field and they'll duck. Is it what? Usually it's, it's you'll see um, you got uh, Alex Highsmith will do it. Uh, T.J. Watt will do it. But what it is is they get up the field really fast, and when the offensive tackle starts to punch, they're going to try to drop and plant their hand and shave that arc on the, on the, uh, at the end of it. And that's just what – I first saw Cameron Wimbley do it against Marvell Smith in like 06. You know, was, that's for, way back what I can remember was uh, Cam Wimbley from Cleveland doing that stuff. But it was it just about ducking under these – you know, you got 6'6", six, 6'8", six, six, offensive tackles, and you're, you know, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, guy, and you're able to plant and then be able to pivot using that hand to be able to shave that, that arc and come around the back door. Let's uh, take a quick uh, look at today in retrospect, uh, since this is our last show out here. Uh, seven shots, a couple of running plays. Najee Harris got stopped a couple times, which has not happened often right. out here. But uh, when uh, Anthony McFarland Jr. got a shot, uh, a line surge. The play stopped initially, and then the pile was moved. I know you had to love that. You love when the pile pushing gets – four. It, it, it's like – the first wave happens, then the second comes, and then all of a sudden that third one comes, yeah, and it just crests the goal line, and that's what it's all about. It's staying with your block, staying with your block, staying with your block until you hear the whistle, and that's the way it's, that's the way it's done. Seven shots tied at uh, three reps apiece again after six reps, so as he had done yesterday, Mike Tomlin calling the first units back onto the field from the sideline by the seventh rep. Usually both sides are well substituted, but they like to let the varsity decide at Wolf when it's 3-3. And how about this? A formation that included two running backs, McFarland and Harris. McFarland lined up as a slot receiver. Uh, the big guy, Darnell Washington, over on that side of the field. And then they just throw a simple slant. Kenny Pickett to George Pickett. It's not much Patrick Peterson is going to do about that. You know, the fun thing about it is back in the day, we used to have split, split backs all the time. Matter of fact, there was an old gray-haired man down there that was pretty good out of that. guy by the name of Rocky Blyer on the sidelines watching over practice today. No uh, Larry uh, Ogunjobi again today, so we saw this time uh, some uh, elevated reps for Montrevious Adams. Uh, yesterday it was Armand Watts uh, getting Ogunjobi's turns, but uh, you heard our guest, uh, if you've been with us all program, Braden Fajoko, saying he's even getting some of that defensive tackle stuff in a pass rushing situation. It's it's a deep defensive line. There's a lot of competition there. There is. Hey, if you can have a little third down capability, you know, the more you Absolutely. can do. Absolutely. Just as long as Braden's not running with the ghost move, right? No, he's got <laughs> He's got to stick with the, what got him there. Look, he's so powerful. One of the things about it is you have that bull rush and that ability to put your forehead in a man's chin and then climb that body, and that's the way it's done, or the old school way. Now, Cam Hayward has done a good job with that inside arm stab. That's the new modern version 
of the bull rush because he, he's got all that power going into one specific area and it can catch a guy off balance and drive him back. It's really a great move and Cam does it well. But uh, Braden's got that old school bull rush thing going on. They ended today as they did yesterday with the move the ball drill. This time it was placed on the plus 25 yard line. See if the offense can get it in or the defense can keep the offense out. And the first team offense uh, down the field in two plays. Kenny Pickett shallow cross to Deontay Johnson for 22 yards. And then Najee Harris, who was one for three on runs in seven shots, able to run it in from the three-yard line. Two plays, touchdown. Kenny Pickett, Wolf, he handed that ball off. I thought it was Joe Montana. He just started trotting off the field with his hands <laughs> up in the air, signaling <laughs> touchdown. If he starts doing things that remind you of Joe Montana, I'm all for it, buddy. Let me tell you. And then the second unit also able to get it in from the 25-yard line. Mitch Trubisky finding tight end Rodney Williams on third and 10 from the 11. A quick three-step read by Trubisky and uh, into the end zone. And that was uh, a wrap for practice. And He smoked uh, that one, man. That, that thing went – must, it sounds like that was the pre-snap read, and uh, he saw it unfold the way he that, wanted to. And that window was no bigger than a bread, yeah. a bread basket, man. It was just, you know, I mean, he just simply smoked it in there, and that was in between a couple of guys. It was a nice job. And Rodney, Hot Rod's been doing some good stuff. You know, he's been climbing. The, he's doing things well in the tight end room. And I, I got to tell you something, I'm impressed with him. He keeps improving. He keeps showing up and doing some things. So good for him, and we'll see what happens. I want to take a minute before we get out of here to remind everyone that while there will be no programming tomorrow, there is a public practice. Uh, 155, that's a, a schedule change made this week. But uh, if, if you're of a mind, you have one more opportunity to come out here to campus and uh, watch the Steelers as they continue preparations for preseason game number two on Saturday against Buffalo at AccraSure Stadium. Wolf, we've done uh, a number of these wrap-up shows. It has been a blast, and as I told your cohort, Max Starks uh, on the uh, training camp live show. This doesn't happen without the phenomenal crew uh, working here uh, behind the scenes at Steelers.com. So many people doing so many jobs oh, yeah. that make this run uh, like a smooth sailing ship since you've made the Titanic analogy <laughs> with Fajoko. But uh, I've had a blast working with you. I look Absolutely. forward to getting back to Pittsburgh and doing some more stuff. As always, Michael, love working with your brother. It's a it's a real pleasure. And these gentlemen here that are manning the cameras and behind the scenes, they do a great job, and I'm totally appreciative of it. It's been a great time. That's going to do it for us from St. Vincent for another summer. For Craig Wolfley, I'm Mike Pursuta. This has been the Wrap-Up Show brought to you by the UPMC Health Plan.